Hello Scholars! Today we're going to see the Proton Transfer Elementary Step. This is the first of the elementary steps, and these are essentially the allowed moves in organic mechanisms. So there's only about 12 or so of these, which you can see written right here. Once you master these, you'll be ready for anything your typical sophomore level OCHEM class will throw at you. So let's get started. The proton transfer step is a very common mechanism step, especially in reactions that happen in protic solvents like water. And it's any step where we see the transfer of a hydrogen cation from an acid reactant over to a base reactant. Ah, here we have our two reactants, acetic acid and ammonia. Acetic acid, notice, has a carboxylic acid functional group, so this is going to serve as our acid. And ammonia here is going to serve as our base. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to show the base taking the most acidic proton from this acid. Now, here it's pretty obvious we have a carboxylic acid functional group. This proton is going to be our most acidic proton here because it's part of the carboxylic acid functional group. Another very common, um, another very commonly acidic uh, functional group are things like alcohols or a little bit more obviously hydrogens that are attached to halogens. Halogens being things like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and the like. Now nothing else on this acid is going to change all that much except for the carboxylic acid functional group and even then really only this oxygen is going to change. So we don't have to worry about any of the rest of this molecule, we just have to make sure that we copy it over when we write our products. Similarly, with our base, the only thing that's going to change is we're going to add a hydrogen atom to the base and we're going to take away this lone pair. Now anytime you see a nitrogen with three bonds and one lone pair, I want you to think base. Okay, so the way that we show this proton transfer, we're going to show this pair of electrons here on the nitrogen becoming a covalent bond to the hydrogen. And the way that we do that is by drawing a curved arrow from that lone pair specifically over to the hydrogen. Like so. Now, hydrogen can only have one covalent bond at a time. That means we have to get rid of this pre-existing covalent bond. We're going to do that with heterolysis, or by breaking that bond in a lopsided manner, such that those electrons go over to the oxygen. Like so. Now notice that here we actually started the curved arrow at the lone pair, not the nitrogen itself, but at the lone pair, and here we started the curved arrow in the middle of this bond and took it to the letter oxygen, uh, not to any of the lone pairs, but to the oxygen itself. Okay, So we're very intentional with how we draw our curved arrows. This curved arrow specifically means that this lone pair is becoming a covalent bond to this other atom, a hydrogen, and this curved arrow over here specifically means that this covalent bond is breaking and those electrons are moving to that oxygen. So where does this get us? There we go. So now we've got this molecule here, the deprotonated form of our acid. This is acetic acid, this is acetate. We've got the protonated form of our base, this is ammonia, this is ammonium. Now, because we changed the order of some bonds and some lone pairs on this oxygen atom and this nitrogen atom here, we need to recalculate formal charges because they probably changed. We'll calculate for the oxygen. Formal charge equals the valence number for oxygen, that's 6, minus 246 valence electrons, minus 1, 
covalent bond gives us a total of negative one. So we add a negative sign there. And the nitrogen, same thing. We need to do the same thing for the nitrogen. So we start off the same way. Nitrogen has a valence number of five. We have four covalent bonds and no lone pair electrons. So we have a formal charge of plus one. So we add that to our nitrogen. Because we have changed the charges on these two atoms, this oxygen is now basic. And in fact, this is called the conjugate base of this reaction. This ammonia, now that it has this positive charge on here, is now acidic. So it's now called the conjugate acid, like that. In a proton transfer step, the acid is always converted into a conjugate base and the base is always converted into a conjugate acid. Now, on this side of the equation, we have an acid component and we have a base component. So, this base could steal an acidic proton from this acid. That makes this overall reaction an equilibrium. And that's a very common feature of many proton transfer steps in mechanisms. Unless you're dealing with a very, very strong acid or a very, very strong base, most proton transfer steps are equilibria. And we can show that simply enough by just adding another arrow like that. So, this is an equilibrium, which side dominates? Well, we need to look at our pKa values for our two acids, for the acid and for the conjugate acid. So, this is an equilibrium, which side dominates? Well, we need to look at our pKa values for our two acids, for the acid and for the conjugate acid. And these you would just look up. The pKa of acetic acid is about 4.8. And the pKa of ammonium is about 9.3. Since the higher pKa acid is on the right side of the equation, this will be the side that dominates. That means that at equilibrium, there's going to be a lot more ammonium and acetate than there is acetic acid and ammonia. Okay, that's it for this elementary step. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments which reaction step you want me to do in the next video. Now, go push some electrons.